Here's what we're going to be exploring today. This expression is known as the supercatalan numbers, though different authors sometimes use different names. But here's the question that I find really intriguing. Can we prove that no matter what non-negative integers we choose for m and n, this expression always gives us a whole number? Now, before we dive into anything too fancy, let's just do what any reasonable person would do and test this with a few examples. Think of this as our mathematical sanity check. So let's start simple. When both m and n are 1, we get 2. That's definitely an integer. So far, so good. And just to check the edge case, when both m and n are 0, we get 1. Also an integer. Now let's try something asymmetric. When m is 2 and n is 1, we get 4. Still an integer. And notice that by symmetry, if we swapped these values, we'd still get 4. Okay, so a few examples look promising, but of course that's not a proof. We need some kind of general strategy. Ideally, we want to find a recurrence relation, something that will let us build an inductive argument. So let's try the most natural thing first. What if we look at the ratio of consecutive terms? This simplifies down to this expression, but notice something unfortunate. This isn't always an integer. So much for a simple row-wise induction. But actually, this failure is telling us something important. Look at that denominator. It's got both m and n coupled together. This suggests that maybe we shouldn't think about stepping just in the m direction. Maybe we need to consider both directions at once. So here's a different idea. Instead of looking at ratios, what if we look at sums? Specifically, let's see what happens when we add the value at m plus 1, n with the value at m, n plus 1. When we substitute the definition, we get this rather unwieldy expression. But don't worry, there's some beautiful structure hiding in here. The first thing we can do is factor out this common piece from both terms. When we do that, we're left with these two fractions in the brackets. Now watch what happens when we simplify those fractions. The algebra works out really nicely, and we get 2 times the quantity 2m plus 1, plus 2 times the quantity 2n plus 1. And here's where things get really interesting. When we combine those terms in the brackets, we get 4 times the quantity m plus n plus 1. Do you see what's about to happen? This is the key insight. Since the factorial of m plus n plus 1 equals m plus n plus 1 times the factorial of m plus n, that factor of m plus n plus 1 is going to cancel perfectly. The cancellation is beautiful. 4 times m plus n plus 1 divided by the factorial of m plus n plus 1 becomes just 4 divided by the factorial of m plus n. So we're left with 4 times our original expression. And there we have it. This remarkably clean recurrence relation. This is exactly what we need to build our proof. Now we can prove our main result using induction on m. The statement we want to prove is that for any given value of m, our expression gives an integer for every possible value of n greater than or equal to 0. Let's start with the base case. We need to show that when m equals 0, our expression gives an integer for every possible value of n. When m equals 0, something really nice happens. Since 0 factorial is 1, our expression simplifies to 2n choose n, which is just the central binomial coefficient. And of course, binomial coefficients are always integers. Now for the inductive step. We assume our statement is true for some value k, and we'll use that to prove it's true for k plus 1. Our inductive hypothesis is that for some fixed value k, our expression gives an integer for every possible value of n. In other words, the entire kth row consists of integers. Now here's where our recurrence relation comes to the rescue. We can rearrange it to express any entry in row k plus 1 in terms of entries from row k. Now look at what we have here. By our inductive hypothesis, both of these terms are integers. This first one is an integer, and since our hypothesis holds for all values of n, this second one is also an integer. So we have 4 times an integer minus another integer. 
Since integers are closed under these operations, this whole expression is an integer. And this means row k plus 1 also consists entirely of integers. And that completes the proof. By mathematical induction, our statement holds for all values of EM, greater than or equal to 0. The super Catalan numbers are indeed always integers, no matter what non-negative values we choose for M and N. Now, for those of you who want to see more, this inductive approach isn't the only way to prove this result. The super Catalan numbers can also be expressed as this alternating sum of products of binomial coefficients. Since each binomial coefficient is an integer, their sum is also an integer. You can verify this identity by showing that both sides satisfy the same recurrence relation and base case. And for those who really want to see something sophisticated, here's yet another approach using what's called Legendre's formula. The idea is that for any prime p, we can compute how many times p divides our expression using this formula. The key insight is that each term in this sum is non-negative, which follows from a beautiful inequality involving floor functions. This inequality holds for any non-negative real numbers x and y. Since this gives us non-negative prime powers for every prime, our number must be an integer. It's a remarkably short proof, though it does use some deeper tools from number theory. And that's the super Catalan numbers for you. What I find beautiful about this problem is how we started with a simple question about integers and ended up discovering this elegant recurrence relation that connects to deeper areas of mathematics. If you enjoyed this exploration, consider subscribing for more mathematical deep dives like this one. And as always, thanks for watching.